this budget is really pushing the employees to choose the new tax regime. We understand that there are two tax regimes being followed in India. One is an old tax regime and one is a new tax regime. Right now in the current scenario, the employees really prefer to go with the old tax regime because they are allowed to take the PT deduction, standard deduction 50,000 rupees. There are exemptions of the different allowances. There is a de uh, deductions from section ATC onwards. So that's the reason the taxable gross becomes very less and the taxes becomes very less in the current scenario. Now in the new tax regime, there was uh, the deductions were not allowed. The exemptions were not allowed. Also, in new tax regime, the slabs they have changed. If you will see the old in the old tax regime, you were supposed to pay there was a slab up to two and a half lakh rupees. Now the slab and the percentage rates also have been changed for the new tax regime that automatically decrease the tax percentage, tax liability of the employees who will pick the new tax regime. Till 2022, we all were running after new old tax regime. Now from 2023, we know 20, uh, this new tax regime has more benefits. So as an HR, you should understand that and make your employer understand that which tax regime will be benefit for them, whether an old tax regime or new tax regime. I hope you have understood this concept and the logic. What's EDLI? Employee Direct Linked Insurance. When the employee becomes the member of PF, at the same time, employee becomes the member of EDLI. EDLI is the cash benefit given to the family in the case of death of the employee. When the active contributor, so when I say active contributor, I mean the person at the time of the death, he or she was contributing in the PF. If that is the case, then the family get a maximum claim of 7 lakh. But if you will research or if you will talk with the PF authorities, they uh, there has been uh, so many notifications also where the PF authorities have clarified that active contribution is not required. But practically when the people really go and apply for the claim, they seek for the active contribution. That means before the time of the death, the employee was the active contributor in the provident fund. If that was the case, then the family is eligible to get the EDLI claim. How much? As I said, maximum 7 lakh. But how it is calculated? The formula of EDLI is 35 times of the employee basic salary plus TA of last 12 months plus bonus. Now, what is bonus? Bonus is the PF corpus of last 12 months. When I say bon a corpus, I mean employee share plus employer share plus interest of the last 12 months. So at the time of a death, what the family will get? If the person is not married, then the amount will be given to the father. And if other relatives wants to get the claim, they have to get the succession certificate from the court to get through this amount. They will not get the amount until or unless there is a succession certificate from the court of India. I hope you have enjoyed the today's trade. Maternity Benefit Act is applicable to all the companies having 10 or more than 10 employees. All the females who has worked for 80 days before the date of delivery are eligible to get the maternity benefit from the organization. But, but one point to be taken care if the lady is already under ESIC wages that means the cash enrollments are less than or equal to 21,000 rupees so the lady can get the benefit from ESIC rather than the maternity so company need not to pay then in that case you can direct the lady to get the benefit from the ESIC what are these benefits the main prime benefit of maternity benefit act is the leaves the paid leaves it's so much of misconception and misunderstanding that we start paying the maternity wages as the monthly salary. No, if we will read the act, then we will understand the maternity wages has to be paid in advance and rest after the delivery. So when I say advance, that means we already know the how the leaves are divided. Eight weeks plus 18 weeks, correct? So the eight weeks before the delivery dates, you have to give the advance and the rest money of 18 weeks, you have to pay the lady within 18, sorry, within 48 hours of delivery. So the 
initial money when the lady is going all together you have to pay in advance and the rest amount within 48 hours of delivery has to be paid the maternity benefit act says the money the wages has to be paid from the employer if the gross wages means the cash and all means are above 21,000 rupees. It's the employer duty to pay the maternity wages. I hope I'm clear and now you are very much clear about the maternity benefit act. And if you have liked this video, hit like, subscribe the channel, do share my channel with the other friends in the HR fraternity and do comment and let me know what are the topics you want me to record on. Thank you. Bye-bye.